Hey everybody, Professor Klein back here in the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohio University to bring you one of my favorite topics and today we are talking about the ear. You might be familiar with this ear model right here. This is normally what we use to teach the ear but throughout the years, I learned that one model does not cut it when it comes to learning the ear anatomy. So I got a video on this model. If you wanna check out that video, go ahead and do that. That will walk you through this entire model. But really what I wanna focus on in this video is after sound gets to the inner ear, what happens? So specifically, I'm within Boom, this part here, which includes the cochlea and the vestibular apparatus part with the vestibule. So let's start breaking that down of what that is and the anatomy within it. So first off, got it drawn up here. And this model, beyond being able to label the semicircular canals, the cochlea. We can see the stapes coming off here, right? That, that last middle ear bone. And the vestibule, we can't really see much else. Round window down here. Again, this is all covered in that other video. But what does this really mean when we say those things? Well, if we pull this up, to here, this is what we're looking at. There's actually two different major components to the inner ear. And certainly if we look at the model, we've got the bone, right? So well, bone is one thing. And we're talking the temporal bone and the cochlea and the vestibular apparatus, it, it sits in that bone, right? That's one component, but the two components that I'm talking about are different. Here they are. All right, here are the two components. And the first one is deeper inside the cochlea and the vestibular apparatus, and it's called the membranous labyrinth. Membranous labyrinth here. And Essentially, this is more membranous compared to the more outer covering of this area. And you can see anything that is blue is your membranous labyrinth. And what you need to know right now is that within this, it's filled with endolymph. Endolymph is this fluid that fills up the membranous part right here but there's a second component and it's called the bony labyrinth. If I were to take my marker and fill in outside of this here. Kind of got a wrist cramp here, but I have finished the bony labyrinth here. We could fill in these gaps of spaces right here. And you can see there's this outer core, this not core, but this outer covering that would cover the membranous. Now, in reality, this is a 2D picture, right? But 3D, it looks more like this. This model here, I got another video on this model if you want to check it out. But really what I want to point at right here is if you look deep in here, see the gray versus the white? The gray versus the white. And if I were to pop this off, you can see inside the cochlea are some chambers. But the gray versus the white right here, the gray would be the membranous labyrinth, right? The the deeper part you can see all those structures in there the white part would be the bony labyrinth and it would cover just like this one completely covers down here 
and then they kind of cut it open so you can see inside. That's the bony versus the membranous labyrinth right there. Again, different video on just this model, but I wanted to use it to show those different levels. Now, actually the bony labyrinth, it's not the bone you might be thinking of, right? It's not like, it's not like this guy right here, this bone, similar, but not the compact spongy bone that you might be thinking of with bone, but it is harder than that membranous labyrinth. So this is what we got going on here. So remember that two different sections to it. And when we look in, the vestibular apparatus, we can see first something called the vestibule. The vestibule is only the bony labyrinth. And that would be the covering here. So I'm gonna put vestibule up here and it can be here or here or here and here, I'll put another one over here. Vestibule, right? The whole outer core, I call it a piece of popcorn. If you eat popcorn, you know what I'm talking about in terms of one section of popcorn. So that's the bony labyrinth in this area. You got two bumps to it though, inside. So now the blue part, we're talking about the membranous part. And the big part, I'm gonna put a big U on it and then write it out over here for you. A big U, that's called the utricle. Utricle right there. The utricle, and then this other one, I'll put a big, um, a big S on it, S. And the S one, stands for saccule. So vestibule covering the utricle and the saccule. Now the utricle and the saccule, those detect linear movement. So we're thinking linear movement here can be horizontal or it can be vertical. Let's keep it simple, just say horizontal or vertical. Now the utricle, is horizontal movement. It detects horizontal movement. And within here, here's an important part. Within these areas, you have special sensors called maculae. Maculae, I don't know, let me take a red, red one here. All right, those are maculae. And those are gonna de actually detect the movement. Now, utricle is horizontal and saccule is vertical. So we're going up or down for the saccule. Now, the way I remember this, and one of my TAs said this this past week, he said, well, Usain Bolt, the fastest man in the world, which I've actually had the privilege to meet in Jamaica, he runs as fast as he can horizontally. So Usain Bolt starts with a U, utricle starts with a U, that's horizontal movement. Then saccule, I'm just thinking, well, spaceship starts with saccule, and a spaceship, when it takes off, it goes vertical. So vertical movement is detected by the saccule. Use those if those help you remember this. Keeping it going though, what the heck are these things? These are the semi-circular ducts and canals. What's the difference? Well, think of your two major components. Black, the outer part, the bony part, that's gonna be your semi-circular canals. So I'll write this off to the side here. Semi-circular canals and if I bring this other model back in here that's what you saw here 
you saw the semi-circular canals. Anytime you got the white bony covering, semi-circular canals. But take a look inside the gray part. That's your semi-circular duct. So the ducts are deeper inside here. Uh, let me just pull this up. Semi-circular duct. So like the duct work, I don't know if you're familiar with like the heating system of your house or the heating system of the anatomy lab building that you might take anatomy class in. It's got these metal ducts and they run through the ceilings and they produce the heat, right? Or for the AC as well. Ducts are within the building. The canals are the building, right? So ducts are deeper than the canals. But you'll notice something, and let me, let me really exaggerate the ampulla because we got the three different ducts and canals, but at the bottom of each, see these bubbles? Kind of pops out at the bottom here. Those are called the ampulla. And on this other model, see this part where it puffs out? You can see another one. Here we go, another one puffs out down here. It's both labyrinths. But again, the receptor cells that de actually detect rotational movement are within the ampulla. So the semicircular ducts and canals detect rotational Whoa, whoa, rotational movement in those things. Now, if you've ever played the dizzy bat game or you spin around a bunch, and I'm trying not to get dizzy here, you stop and then you're still dizzy, right? Well, that's because anything that is membranous has endolymph in it. Endolymph is this more watery substance that flows around. And that endolymph can get moving. And it can get moving. And then when you stop, it's still moving. So when you go to walk, your vestibular system says, you're still spinning. When in fact you're not, it's just the water or that endolymph that is still moving and bending the cells that tell your brain that you're spinning, twisting, rotating, right? So that's all going on up here. But membranous versus bony is a key, key thing to know. Next up, this part over here. So the cochlea. The cochlea is a two and a half spin structure. It's the organ of hearing. But what actually is going on in the cochlea I think it's really confusing like this. Some people get it, I just don't get it like this, or I didn't at first. I want to unwind this so we can see inside. Oh, all right, here I have some clay that I put together and I made the three different chambers because there's actually one, two, three different chambers of the cochlea. We'll see those in a moment. What you need to know for right now is that the two, one on top, one on the bottom, they're very similar. They're both filled with paralymph. And you can see on here, the black means they're part of the bony labyrinth. So in this model, they're blue and they have the paralymph in it. Now the middle one, the, uh, the green one here, that's the cochlear duct. That one's blue on here. Sorry for the confusion of colors if it mixes you up, but this is different than this one here. The blue one on here, cochlea, or cochlear duct. The green one in here is the cochlear duct. It's the one in the middle. Don't even need colors because it's the duct that's in the middle. Now, if I were to take this and unwind it here, let me unwind it for you. All right, when I go to unwind it, this is what I have right here you can see those three different chambers. And let me go ahead and draw this on the board for you. All right, 
here's what we're looking at if we were to draw this out right here. This is a, a chamber as well in the middle. What's the top one? Well, I'm gonna use blue. Or now I'm gonna use black because this is a bony labyrinth. And this is called the scale vestibuli. Scaly vestibuli right here. It's got paralymph in it. In the middle, we're talking about the cochlear ducts. Cochlear duct right here. And then down here, scaly tympani. All right, in that other video, you saw the whole sound transmission. Just as a reminder, this up here would be the oval window. Oval window. The, uh, the stapes right here, this would be the stapes. The stapes would be on the other side of the oval window, pushing into the scaly vestibuli, producing the waves, the vibrations. And at some point, it's going to cross over into uh, the cochlear duct here. But let me really give it some color because the cochlear duct is part of that membranous labyrinth and it's got endolymph inside. So I'm going to put endolymph here so you guys remember that endolymph is inside the cochlear duct, but we have paralymph inside the other chambers. Paralymph right there. So this is, this is it thrown flat, right? And I like to think of it as like a piano. You know, if you're playing a piano, some keys down low, they're really low, right? Super low keys. And then the other ones are really high. And those are the high keys. That was my full range right there, low to high. And uh, that's what's going on here. But the first part of the cochlea is high pitch. So as the vibrations come in, they're gonna cause high pitch in this first part. And then it gets lower and lower and lower as you get to the end of the cochlea. Remember, it's a spiral, but I've unwound it here for you. Now let's look inside of it. So if I were to pull this off like this, right? We got the three different chambers and look inside of it. Remember one, two, three, let me go vertical for you. One, two, three, remember that for a moment here while I draw the inside. All right, this is the cross section here. Let me bring these back into it. Again, if you're looking through here, if I were to take a cut straight down, straight down the cochlea and open it up, you could see inside. Now here's what you would see. You would see the three chambers and you would see the scaly, Vestibuli, I'll go SV on that one. You'd see the cochlear duct, also called the scaly media for that cochlear duct. You would also see the scaly tympani. And the vibrations would be in here, pushing down on that cochlear duct, specifically the organ of corti. So there's a specialized set of cells called the organ of corti and i'm waving back and forth because that's where your hair cells are at not these hair cells but the receptors for the vibrations of sound and those are gonna bend and again depending on the pitch they'll bend and they will activate this nerve this right here is the cochlear nerve i'll put this in green cochlear nerve now technically it's a branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve 
So sometimes you see it as cochlear nerve, other times you see it as cochlear branch, either one is okay. It's nerves, it's actually neurons, so uh, transmitting an action potential to the brain. And that's what would be inside the cochlear duct. But I'll do you one better than this drawing. I got the actual thing right here. Different video covering this one, but this right here is the cochlear duct model. And to remind you, we've got this Reisner's membrane dividing what would be up here. The scaly vestibuli would be like right up here. Inside where my hand is at right now, this is the cochlear duct with the organ of corti. See all those hair cells in there, those green things with the nerves coming off of it. This is where those hair cells bend and they'll activate the cochlear nerve coming over here. You also have the tectoral membrane, the basilar membrane, and then the green part down here, that would be your scaly tympani. Again, another video for this one, but just wanted to bring it in so that you could see what I actually had drawn up here was this. All right, that is about it for this video. Covered the different parts of the inner ear. Specifically, we rolled it out, we used some clay. My hands are all covered in clay, but it's worth it because it shows what's going on with the cochlea and then inside as well. Please take some time to hop over and check out the sound transmission video, as well as the cochlear duct video, the ear video, all the different videos so you get a full understanding of the ear and how hearing and balance happen. As always, take some time to hit that like button if this helped you out. I'm trying to keep these free and keep these coming out every single week on topics that you want to hear. So hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, share it with your friends, leave me some comments, and I will respond to those as soon as I can. I'm Professor Klein from Ohio University, and thanks for watching.